Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about material model templates. M-Calibration has a number of interesting features that allow you to come up with very sophisticated material models using templates. And this is a feature that most people may not be aware of. So today I'm going to talk about how you can use this uh, to better calibrate certain material models that are very interesting and powerful. So to do that, I have an M calibration window here in the upper right corner. I have yes, my stress strain graph and I have a load case in the upper left. The focus though here is on material models and the template features of M calibration. So I'm going to set the material model. And typically we just scroll down this uh, list here on the left and pick something we're interested in, like the ANSYS Aruda voice model. And then you pick that and then you get some parameters. There is really no template here. You don't, you don't control that. You just select them all and you get the parameters. But in some cases, you really want a little bit more freedom to set up how the material model is defined. So I'm going to demonstrate that using an LSDyna template in this example. So I'm going to scroll down to LSDyna models. I'm going to click on template. And um, here you can see there is a number of buttons here. And you can actually type in your template any way you like here as just typing text. But these Predefined templates are useful because they kind of explain a little bit how this works. So I just clicked on Matte Elastic. In LSDyna, there is a material model called Star Matte Elastic. It's a linear elastic material model. And then if you're an LSDyna user, you will realize that anything with a dollar sign, dollar sign becomes a comment. So this is just a comment to remember what's going on. The actual commands to define this linear elastic material model is on the following line. And it needs to have uh, let's see, one, two, three, four parameters. The first one is the material ID, and this is set to be one here. You can say whatever you want. And then it needs to have the density. And the density is defined in this area here. And this is, looks kind of weird. What is this? Percent sine RO, uh, one e to the minus nine, and then some, some values. So to understand what this means is we can read about it in the template here, in the template help. Uh, anything in this template uh, area that is between percent signs becomes a variable. So uh, maybe we'll demonstrate that first. I click OK. We'll see now we have three variables, rho, e, and pr. So we go back here. Rho is this one. So the first text after the percent sign becomes the name of the variable. We can call it rho if we want. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then we have a number of parameters. So, so let's, let's look at the help again here. The first value after the name is the value, the default value that's assigned to this parameter. So 1e minus 9. It doesn't really matter what you assign there. You can always change it back in the main window. But this is the default value that it's given. And then there are a few other parameters. Uh, you can read about them here. You'll see that uh, the, they are as follows. First variable name. Then the lower bound, upper bound, optimization index, dimension, and how wide the text field is. So in this case, we have a dimension of eight, which is here, if you go look here, is density. You don't necessarily need to specify all of these. It's only if you want to convert units within M calibration, since M calibration handles units for you if you, if you want to use that feature. You can also treat them as uh, independent of units, and that sometimes is easier, particularly when you start working in this uh, template area. So I'm going to get rid of these if I want, and I can then you get rid of these if, if I want, but we can also keep them. So E has a default value of 1, and then it's how upper and lower bounds, an optimization index, and a dimension. So that's how this is, works. We have three variables defined here. If I click back to OK, here are my three variables. I can now change the upper and lower bounds here too if I want and the optimization index, etc. So that's that's the, the easiest way to use a material model template within M calibration. It gives you the full freedom to type in whatever uh, material definition you like using the commands for the specific finite element solver you're interested in. This is LSDyna, but the same applies for ANSYS, Abacus, etc. Um, but there are some other features here that, that I want to mention that are uh, very cool that uh, you may not be aware of. I'm going to click on MAT 075 here. So this is a specific model in LSDyna. Uh, you can see what, what it's called here. It's a foam model. It's a crushable foam model. 
and it's, it's a pretty complicated definition, but let's talk about it a little bit. These lines are comments. They're two doubles, uh, uh, dollar signs. It's a comment. We don't need them, but it just helps us read this. Then we have the material ID. We have density. We have uh, y, a parameter called YM, VC, etc. So here are those uh, parameters. And then we have another comment. And here's the ne next one is we define uh, more variables. So anything with the, within the percent signs becomes a variable. And if you, you can type any other text here, that's not a variable, and that will just be echoed back to your five. So before we go through this text, let's see what happens if we uh, actually see what M calibration converts this text into. So I'm going to say, OK, here are the parameters that are defined by the template. If I export this model, I can only export this LSDynA template to LSDynA format, but that's OK. I'll save it here. I'm going to save it in this directory. And um, then we can take a look at this uh, model to see what uh, what it looks like. So this is the file that we just generated. I just double click on it, open it with the text editor. So the text editor, these are the comments. They are still here. And then we ha ha they're here. Right? Here are the first for, uh, line that we talked about. But then we have these tables. In LSDynA, they're called curves, curve ID 101, 102, etc. Where do these come from? How does M, M calibration cre create these tables for us? And this is a really a cool feature. Uh, that I want to talk about here. So if you look at this, it creates this table in Python. So there is a section here in this uh, a template definition where the commands are not just echoed back into the exported material model file, but it interpreted by, in this case, a Python a command interpreter. So Python start and Python end is, is, is uh, showing M calibration where the Python commands are. And then the commands between them are Python commands. So this is a Python comment. But I wanted to define now a variable S1 that I'm going to use in my Python template. So the variable S1, I want to also be able to set over here. So S1, by doing it this way, it's interpreted by M calibration, creates variable S1 with a default value of 0 0.05. That's what we have back here. And then I can look at the commands here. I create a linspace uh, Python uh, array, which has 30 values, 30 values, right? And that's uh, why we have 30 uh, lines here in this one. So let's go back. So it uh, linearly spaces out x values between 0 and 0 0.9. And I, I get 30 of them here, apparently. And then I have a for loop in Python. So for each value in the x array here, I calculate the y uh, vector by some kind of Python command. So this can be any, could be any mathematical expression you like, or what, anything you want. Anything you can do in Python, you can do here. So I'm basically creating a vector y with these values. But see, now I want to replace s1, which is the variable, with the actual value that the user is specifying back here. So to replace it, I don't want to define a variable. I want to have defined it with a percent sign. I want to use the value of that variable. That's when I need to use the dollar sign. So anything within dollar signs becomes a variable that would be evaluated. If I didn't have that, then S1 would be, a, would be a variable that Python would need to know, and Python doesn't know it. So this would replace be a variable. So that's the, the dollar sign syntax here. You can read more about that in the help format, as I mentioned earlier. And then you basically just print this out. This is a Python print command, and that creates the, the table that we had before. So this allows you to parameterize a table or any of the material commands that you have within the definition in a little bit more abstract way, but it's very powerful because you don't need to, um, to you, can, you can search for the parameters to drive them the table or the list of parameters uh, instead of having a, a huge list and try to search them directly. This can be much more effective in terms of the material calibration procedure. So that's Python start, Python end, and further down I define a second curve in this case is Python start, Python end. Um, so this is an example within an LSDynA uh, situation when you have this. You can do this in any of the other template 
features that are available in M calibration. It, it applies to ANSYS, Abacus, etc. Even PolyUmod has templates that you can use for this uh, purpose. So that's kind of that's kind of what I want to talk about here to, to demonstrate to you that there are some really powerful templates that you can use to have a really powerful and, and interesting control of how the material model is defined and which control parameters dictate what's used in the material model. If you have any questions, uh, write them in the questions below. Thank you.